Okay. Um, Thank you very much, Martin, for summarizing these different urban and religious phenomena and also for sharing conceptual questions that we develop also thanks uh, to the collaboration between, between the ICAS and the KFG. Um, let's now turn to those concepts that we have discussed more intensively uh, within our research group. And we start with uh, co-speciality, or no? Yes. So the concept of uh, co-speciality was introduced by the French geographer Jacques Lévy in the Dictionary of Geography and Science of Social Space, first published in French in 2003. Here, he defined co-speciality as one specific type of interspeciality or relation between spaces, in addition to the already well-known concept of interface, so the horizontal relation between two juxtaposed spaces like the seashore and nesting, that is the relation of inclusion of a space in a larger one like Russian dolls. So co-speciality differs substantially from these traditional types of interspeciality. In fact, instead of assuming a Euclidean type of space according to which to one space correspond one single co combination of coordinates, the concept of co-speciality dwells on the idea that space is a multi-layer reality and that each of these layers of reality drawn by real or imagined special action can operate according to different metrics or strategies of distance management while occupying the same physical extent. It is on the basis of this notion of space that co-speciality is defined as the vertical interaction between two distinct but overlapping spaces occupying the same physical geographical extension. And to account for this type of uh, situation, he gave the image of the baklava in which honey laboriously runs through the dawn and may or may not connect pistachios and almonds and it's not the case that he selected this image for explaining the concept. In fact, in considering this multi-layer reality, the original question asked by Levy is, are those spaces located on the same physical extension actually connected? So the answer is not necessarily. As underlined by the scholar, having two realities simultaneously situated in the same year is not sufficient to have a co-spatial interaction. That is not a mechanical and obvious effect of the coextensiveness of two social spaces. In fact, even when there are areas of contact between spe uh, special realities, social actors can actually learn to unsee one or more of the other and thus ignore elements of the social world that they think or they were thought are not relevant to them. As beautifully fictionalized by Chana Mieville in the sci-fi novel The City and the City, or as imposed uh, by several segregationist regimes around the world. Indeed, the geographical concept of co-speciality is made tangible by the phenomenon of the many city in one city, well studied by the uh, Chicago School, according to which uh, social actors sharing the same physical extent, in this case, the city space, are not necessarily inhabiting the same city, a situation that in geographical terms will be defined as simple uh, co-presence. That said, how do distinct uh, but overlapping spaces come into contact then? So, according to Levy, a co-spatial relation between overlapping spaces is only made possible through a third element called switch. It is a place able to link up other two spatial layers. A lack of switches will maintain layers separated from each other, thus preventing co-spatiality and maintaining co-presence. An example offered by the French geographer for the switch is, for instance, a railway station that, I quote him, allows, to, um, allows the traveler to go out of the binding railroad network to enter the much more capillary street network of the city. 
In other words, uh, the railway station enabled to switch from one strategy of distance management to another, therefore, from one space to another. Um, so far, the concept of co-speciality has been used by human geographers and sociologists to examine um, logics of interaction of law, political and social spaces in contemporary Western societies. Um, by acknowledging the potential of the concept to analyze the multidimensional condition of the city life, our research group applied the lens of co-speciality to address the relational aspect between coextensive spaces that were produced, used, and interpreted by different groups in pre-modern cities. So more specifically, we argued that religion can offer an interesting lens to look at this specific type of entanglement of spaces, as it is as much a technique to mark out space by ritual use, ephemeral or lasting uh, sacral, um, sacralization of space, as it is a cultural technique. So this team, so the team of co-speciality, was the focus of our 2020 yes, annual conference, which brought together researchers from different disciplines, such as archaeology, religious studies, history, and literary studies, to engage with three main uh, lines of inquiry. So A, how overlapping uses or overlapping interpretation of the same space can be regulated by institutions, individuals, and groups to foster or avoid a co-special interaction. B, the role of temporality in co-special interactions, and C, the religious and urban changes fostered by this type of entanglement of spaces, but also the techniques and consequences of processes of unseeing the other coextensive spaces. Um, an illustrative case is given by the Ghat of medieval India. Uh, the monumental flight of steps placed along water bodies, lakes, or river, analyzed by Shupriya Chaudhuri <laughs> and Sarah Keller through a literary and ritual perspective. So these places serving urban community as a main source of water became in practice, as well as in narratives, liminal stages able to bridge different types of social spaces. Besides being places of sociability for otherwise separated social groups, these places belonging to both water and earth, life and death, sacred and profane, were charged with religious significance, thus becoming crossing places or switches between the otherwise disconnected dimension of the human actors and of the devas, which according to Hindu cosmology are two among the multiple realms that coexist and constitute the universe. And this is just one of the examples that we analyzed during the, uh, the conference. But we now move on the concept of heterarchies with Simone Wagner.